We've reached the end of the year, and in 2021, I tried 21 boots over an extended period of time. So that means today, we need to rank them all from worst to first. Let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya, and then I'll be on my way. Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig. If this is your first time seeing me, my channel is devoted to folk music and cowboy boots. And over the past year, I've uploaded more than 230 videos with cowboy boot reviews, how-to videos, informational educational videos, music videos, and so much more, including giveaways. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, subscribe to my channel right now if you haven't already, because I'm just getting started. If at any point you see a boot that you like during this video, I've linked up its entire review video here on my channel in the description below. And be sure to check jeremiahcraig.com slash promo codes to see if you can save 10% or more on that specific boot. This is the third year in a row where I've made a ranking video and I'm trying to add just a little bit more objectivity because I know so many people are looking for different things when it comes to cowboy boots. However, complete objectivity will be impossible, so I will be injecting my own preferences into this ranking as well. So let me cover five categories I put together to help me rank these boots this year. The first category is a modern or traditionally made score. I think traditionally made boots are the best and it's what I prefer to wear. That means leather lining, leather heel counter on the inside, hard leather insole which is also channeled for the welt, stacked leather heel and so much more. They last the longest, they are the most comfortable for me and there's just less to go wrong on the inside. The most traditionally made boots will get a score of 5 out of 5 and the most modern made boots will get a score of 1 out of 5. The second category is a value score. This is somewhat related to the modern slash traditionally made score and the value score is basically my opinion of how good of a value or investment the boot is. Much of this has to do with how long I think the boots will last, but also what you get for the money. So there are some boots with higher value scores that are ranked lower just because they're at such a good price point. The third category I have is a size score. Sizing is so important to the right cowboy boot fit, and many companies these days will only offer a D or double E width for men but there are actually many more widths that they don't care to carry uh, just because it saves them money to offer less sizes. There are actually width sizes from A to triple E and more, so this category gives more points to companies who care enough to carry narrow and wider sizes. Five is the best score that can be achieved here. The fourth category is a design score. This score is a combination of how good the boot looks and if it does what it actually says it is designed to do. The more it lives up to how the company markets it and how good it looks, in my opinion, the higher the score it gets, with five being the highest. And the fifth and final category is a spiritual experience score. This is a completely subjective score of something that I talk about regularly on this channel. If you've ever tried a boot that you fell in love with immediately, you know this feeling too. Again, this category is ranked out of five, with one being the most grounded feeling and five being the most transcendent, heavenly spiritual experience I had when wearing a boot. Now that you know how these boots will be ranked, let's kick this off and go worst to first. There are 21 boots in this list, but two sets of two pairs of boots were built exactly the same from the same brand, so they'll be ranked in the exact same spot. So therefore, there are 19 spaces in this list. Let's start at 19. All right, so coming in at number 19 is the Ariat Hybrid Rancher H2O Waterproof Boot. This has foam insoles and a mesh lining, and in my opinion, that decreases the value because mesh lining tends to tear really quickly. It only comes in sizes D and double E widths. The look is fine for a work boot, but it's not completely as waterproof as it says. I did a lot of waterproof testing with this and I still did get some leaking, but it will be a good option for many of you out there doing landscaping work and not in puddles all day long. 
Coming in at number 18 is the Ariat Cowhand. This is a made in Mexico Ariat, which has a slightly more traditional build. It's got a great outsole and a removable insole, plus it comes with bee widths. The leather is extremely stiff though, and a beast to break in. It feels very similar to the fit of the Rambler, which is all instep. So there is a lot of room in the toe box, but the instep is really low and I feel like that's how they fit this particular boot. It's not comfortable at all. In fact, I liked this one much less than the Ariat Hybrid Rancher H2O. If it was completely up to me and there was no objectivity in this list, the Ariat Cowhand would come in last. Coming in at number 17 is the Ariat Heritage R-Toe Boot. Now there's lots of modern aspects about this boot, including the outsole, insole, and the heel, but it's comfortable and supple, which makes it a good beater boot. Plus, they have bee widths for this boot, and it's similar to the Heritage Roper that I tried last year, but it has a different insole, so it's not quite as comfortable. I still like the Ariat Heritage Roper better. But overall, I think this would be a great budget beater boot, especially if you're coming from the sneaker world and enjoy those removable insoles and the comfort that comes from those athletic shoes. Coming in at number 16 is the Ariat Ventec Ultra with the narrow square toe. This is made more like a sneaker than a boot, but that's how they market it. This is a very light and athletic made boot, especially with that bantamweight outsole, which makes this uh, extremely light. When you put on a bantamweight outsole boot from Ariat, you'll be surprised about how well balanced they are and how light they are. So it's a very unique niche in the cowboy boot industry that Ariat is filling here, but the plastic sole along the edge and the heel and on the bottom, it loses color when it gets wet. Uh, so this is a boot that uh, you're just going to want to use as a beater as well. It only comes in two widths, the D and the double E, but it is exactly what they say it is. It's light, it's cool, and exactly how it, I would expect a boot like this to be, except it's just a little stiff. Coming in at number 15 is the Dan Post Milwaukee. Now this boot has many modern aspects to it, including a plastic well, but it's still a little bit more traditionally made than the Ariats we've looked at here. Uh, as far as value is concerned, it's a budget boot with many sizes, including B-Wits, but it uses a cheap leather and process, so it's kind of made a little bit sloppy, especially on the inside where they've done the lining. Still, it's one of the best fitting budget boots that I've ever tried. Coming in at number 14 is the Tacovas Bandera. Tacovas lands like right in the middle of the modern to traditionally made score. It's not quite as traditionally made as they lead on sometimes, but the outsole, the Vibram outsole here is awesome. I love how aggressive it is. I love how thick it is. The leather on this Bandera that they're using on the outside is beautiful, but the fit is awful. Guys, they do carry a D and a double E width, as they do with all of their other boots, but it's kind of like they made the Bandera to not have a removable insole, but then they added a removable insole anyways, which fills out the boot in a really awkward way. So this is a very annoying boot for me to wear, which is why it ranks so low this year. Coming in at number 13 is the Abilene Black Suede, model number 6661. Abilene is a budget US brand, and I bought this one used on shopgoodwill.com, which I recommend for all of you out there who are on a budget. It was only slightly used, it was still practically brand new. I love it, and the last Abilene that I had lasted eight years, so I'm so happy that I was able to find this and add it to my collection this year. Usually they only come in a D or a double E width, and there's nothing really special about them. They use a lot of plastic parts, but I love how they look and how they feel. I wore this a lot more than others that are ranked higher this year. And if I was going to be completely subjective, this would have a higher ranking than what it does here at 13. Coming in at number 12 is the JW Boot Company Dallas Nubuck Bullhide Boot. JW Boot Company made a lot of improvements in their boots this year, including a leather heel counter, but the Insole is still part cloth, which could decrease the life of a boot slightly. 
and they're also really great at making a D or a double E width, but they still need to dial in their other width sizes a little bit. The biggest value of JW Boot Company, in my opinion, is that you get to choose your color, your toe shape, your leathers. You get to decide what your boot looks like and at the price point of JW Boot Company, nobody else can do what they do. This Dallas Nubuck Bullhide was stiff to wear at first, but after it broke in, it was a joy to wear. Coming in at number 11 is the Double H Dylan. This is another US made brand, which has some traditional methods, but still uses a fabric lining around the foot and some plastic parts. This is still a great value though because of the old town folklore leather that it uses and its ice outsole which is one of the most durable outsoles that you'll find in the cowboy boot industry. This is an awesome outsole guys. Plus they have B-Wits. This lives up to what they say. It's a better fit than the Tacoba's Bandera in my opinion but some of the construction makes it tiring to wear after a while. Still, one of the best work boots on this list. Coming in at number 10 is the Boulet 9381. This model isn't as traditionally made as some of Boulet's older models since it does have a removable foam insole. But I've had Boulet's for more than 10 years and this has similar qualities to show me that it's ready to last a long time and be a good return on investment. They still only have two widths for this boot, but I love the hybrid outsole and the Roper-esque look to this boot with a toe bug as well. It's not a super attractive boot, but it's very versatile and fun to wear. Coming in at number nine is the Los Altos Python Boots. This boot has some traditional aspects with modern factory methods, but a great value for what you get in exotic. Still, there's only two widths, but it looks great, even though it doesn't have the best finish in some places. Still, it's badass, and I feel like this is great to wear, especially with its soft leather lining. Coming in at number eight is the Justin Roper, model number 3802. This is a older used Justin Roper, which is just a little bit more traditionally made than some of the Ropers that they're making nowadays. And Justin Ropers are a great value for the money, especially if you can find a pair used like I did. And this boot was made when B-Wits were a little bit more popular, but Justin is still making B-Wits in their modern Ropers that they have on their website today. And the Roper design isn't really anything special. It's very simple and practical, and it doesn't get me too revved up, but it's still a nice boot to own since it's such a classic model. I mean, the Justin Roper is famous. Up next is the Tony Lama CZ93 Elephant Boots. This was made during a phase when Tony Lama started to cut some corners and add removable insoles, but otherwise, these are very traditional. This is another used cowboy boot find sent to me by an awesome viewer, and this had a great price tag on it for an elephant boot. Plus, these older Tonys still made B-Wits, and it's a great design. Even though these were dyed black by the previous owner, still, Elephant is one of the most durable leathers that you can get for a cowboy boot, and they feel great to wear, too. Coming in at number six is the Chisos King Roper. This is an all ostrich boot. Ostrich on the foot counter and the shaft and even the pull tabs. And it's all traditionally made except it comes with a luxurious removable insole which feels really great. And the only reason why this boot isn't ranked higher is because they're only offering it in one width at the moment and that's a D width. Still, it's a great design and the unique Chisos insole works better in this Roper style boot than it does in their other boot models in my opinion. Plus, the ostrich everywhere looks incredible. If you like the Chisos insole feeling before, you will love how these Ropers feel. It's seriously perfect for the Chisos insole. Coming in at number five are two pairs of Tony Llamas that are made exactly the same. That's a Tony Llama model number 6250 with shrunken shoulder bullhide and the Tony Llama Y1305 bone colored lizard. 
These are so awesome. And they're the older Tony Llamas from when they made them traditionally and the best in my opinion. The old Tony Llamas have a bunch of different widths. They look great and don't try to be anything that they're not. I loved wearing these two boots this year. Oh, I love that we're in the top five now. This is my favorite part of the ranking videos coming in at number four is the Heritage Flores. This is a beautifully made boot, which is an incredible value for how much work this hand tooling takes. And the hand tooling is all over this boot. It's beautiful. The only thing that brings us down in the rankings is that they only have one width, similar to the Chisos. But the hand tooling, the hand lacing, and the toe shape are jaw-dropping. They are head turners and feel incredible to wear. Love this Heritage Flores boot. Up next in spot number three is the Lucchese Randall. This Lucchese proves why the brand is so popular, very traditionally made, and such attention to detail. They have a go big or go home attitude, including the price tag. They only come in a D and a double E with online, but the toe out cut ostrich looks amazing. It's so supple. The inlay on the front and the back, along with the cording and the stitching along the side is beautiful. I love this boot so much and the leather lining on the inside feels so soft. All of that together makes this a seriously amazing boot to experience. Coming in at number two is the Hondo 3416. Hondo is one of the best traditionally made boots for the price and some of the only traditionally made boots that you can get for under $300. And that's one of the reasons why this boot ranks so high, just because you get so much value for the money. Plus they offer B widths and other width sizes too when you order special through a retailer. The new buck bullhide feels great and the rubber midsole makes this a very durable option. They also upgraded the heel cap too, which made Hondo fall a bit in my ranking last year, but this is appropriately ranked this year. Still a few loose threads along the shaft and the pull holes, but that can be fixed easily and not a, an enormous deal breaker for me. And it feels great to wear. Super traditional at a great price. I seriously don't know how they do it. Finally, the best ranked boot for 2021 is two pairs of blackjack boots, the Rattlesnake and the Pura Ruku. These are 100% traditionally made in the USA. They're an incredible value at its price point too, considering the attention to detail. Plus they'll make you any width that you want and have by far the most size options, especially when you order from timsboots.com. I love the design of their boots and how tough their leather outsole is. It might take you a little bit longer to break these boots in, but once you do, you will love them for the rest of your life because they will seriously last you that long. From the get-go, the way these boots are made and the way these boots feel go above and beyond every other boot that I tried this year. I love blackjack boots so much. And that's it. What did you guys think about this year's ranking? Let me know down in the comments along with other boot brands that you want me to look at in 2022. Thank you so much for watching today. Please subscribe and I'll see you around. Peace. 21 boots in 2021. You can bet we had ourselves just a little fun. I'll do my best to tack on a few here in 2022. Yeah. Thanks for watching this year. Why don't you check out this other ranking video up here? Or I got a music video down here I think you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs> yeah. Look out 2022, here we come. Yes, peace, have a good one.